Hello everyone, Salvador and Warrior here, and today I'm really really honored to talk about this class mod character that comes from one of my favorite uh, From Software uh, video games. Um, you ever heard of Bloodborne? Because this is where this character comes from. Uh, this character is known as the Choir Hunters. You don't get to find them until later on in this really gigantic castle that comes with a really interesting character that talks about um, something about eyes or something. I forget the names. It's been a long time since I played Bloodborne, but I had a lot of fun playing it, especially with the aggressive gameplay compared to the passive gameplay that I was so used to playing from the Dark Souls series. But with all that aside, um, you know, we're going to talk about this character today, and, um, I thought it would be really, really nice to, um, talk about the gimmicks of this character, because just so you know, um, this character does not have a good virtue. It would always land on a bad virtue when you hit 100. However, there's a benefit to getting to this bad virtue. The bad virtue is known as Insightful, and Insightful um, lowers 15% on all resistances except for Death Blow, with a 15% boost on three moves, and it has a good chance of um, stress healing the team, and also has a good chance in debuffing the enemy team. More importantly, of course, it has a chance to um, skip a turn as well. So there's those pros and cons. Crazy, right? I, I thought it was really, really neat. Um, but let's get started in talking about these stats. So as you can see, the Choir Hunter um, has low HP and a pretty high dodge at the same time. So, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, um, based on the 2 and 2. Lower HP, but lots of dodge. Also, the character has 12 speed. Probably the fastest uh, class mod characters that I've come upon so far. Um, the accuracy mod doesn't really exist because of the trinket, but the crit however is pretty high a solid let me um, make the comparison real quick 8.1 percent of crit I think that's pretty neat so um with all that aside the resistances are 90 across except for disease 30 percent Stun and debuff is at 100% solid, and if you're worried about um, disarming traps, this character has a pretty high chance of disarming it. So, there you go. Uh, keep in mind though, when the character does get too insightful, all these resistances will get lowered by 15%. Uh, I pretty don't have a lot of time to do the math for you, so... Just put two and two together and you get a good idea what the stats would look like once they hit Insightful. Overall, um, weird looking stats, but I approve. I'm, I'm fine with 35 dodge for lower HP, so it's totally okay. Now, we get to talk about the combat skills. There are like three combat skills that benefit from Insightful, and everything else is all fair game. So I will discuss the moves that don't benefit from Insightful, but also um, will work your way up to getting to Insightful. And then of course, obviously the last three combat skills will be about the benefits it gets from Insightful. So let's start off with the first combat skill, um, the Cane Attack. The um, Cane move is a combat skill that pushes the character back by one position. It could be used in any positions and it can hit the enemy side in positions one and two. 
um, it is an AOE move, so it'll hit those positions at the same time. The accuracy base is 110, so that's pretty good. Uh, damage mod is negative 45 uh, percent, so you'll be doing pretty decent damage. Crit mod for uh, 4 percent, and it causes bleed four points for three rounds. And on hit, uh, the character will get a buff of two speed. This is pretty good, in my opinion. Um, it does decent damage, it does bleed, however it pulls them back, but that's okay because it can be used in any positions. Even if you're switched around, this move's really, really, really good. So that's all I gotta say about this move. Um, really good combat move. Um, just and even if you use it on skeletons i don't think you should be turned off by it because you know it'll do decent damage it reminds me of the flagellant but you know not crazy crazy like this character's crazy but not super crazy but i'll you know i'll talk about that well look it's fine I'm gonna keep moving on. This move's good. That's what I'm trying to say. Is this movie? This movie. This move is really good. The next uh, combat skill is visceral attack. Visceral attack is a move that can be used in positions uh, two, three, and four, and can hit the enemy's position from one, two, and three. It pulls the character forward by one position. It's an accuracy base of 100, so it has some pretty low accuracy. The crit mod is 2%, and if the enemy is stunned, um, they will clear their stun. But there's a good chance where if the character, if the enemy is stunned, they'll inflict bleed three points for three rounds. However, I don't think they're going to live because by the time they're stunned and you do this move, you're going to be doing 300% boost of damage if they're stunned. So it's pretty powerful. On hit, you get a boost of uh, 2 speed. Holy shit. That's all I got to say to this. Um, if you see the opportunity of, a care of an enemy being stunned, I say you do this move. This move is just too good to pass up. Um, if you do it by itself without the stun, eh, it's alright. But, you know, what can you do? Anyways, um, this move's really good. If the enemy is stunned, I say do it. Just make sure you plan out your stuns first before you get to your next round. Because this character is fast enough to get to the enemy first before they clear themselves of stun. Um, just don't expect to do it on the back row enemies because um, people, enemies that do um, stress damage, of course they're gonna go first before you do for some strange reason. But if you see, if you see yourself beating them first, do it, man. It'll blow you away. The next combat skill is the Old Blood. The Old Blood is a combat skill that can be used in positions 3 and 4 and can heal with uh, 89 points. And when the move is completed or done or active, whatever, um, the character will get a negative 6 stress heal. This is good. This Blood Vial, it just works out. You stress heal for um, negative six while you heal between eight and nine. Obviously, if you use trinkets, um, that will benefit you from um, getting the heals a little better. And more importantly, if you do it to others, you will still get the stress heal on yourself only. So just remember that you get the stress heal for you only while you're healing everyone else however the character is not a um a healer healer but you can at least give it a shot i guess that's pretty much it the last uh combat skill that benefit that doesn't benefit from insightful but will get you there is the phantasm shell 
the Phantasm Shell is a, a combat skill that can be that can be used in positions two, three, and four, and will inflict horror by three points of stress for three rounds. However, um, the buff will give the target 40% damage, a 10% crit, but you'll suffer a debuff of negative two speed. That is totally fine, and at the same time, the buff is crazy. Um, and of course, when you get inflicted with horror, you're already on the road to being insightful. Um, there are trinkets out there that will um, increase the duration of horror and will add more points to horror. And if you ever have like some pretty negative trinkets, even, I mean, negative quirks, even better. Um, so let's say you've been doing this in a long dungeon and you get to insightful. Um, the three combat skills that benefit from Insightful um, is recommended that you use. So you have to make a choice on which combat skill you want to sacrifice. So let's say you sacrifice um, these three combat skills for these other three. Let me tell you what they do. First of all, uh, the tentacle attack is a range move. That pulls you back in one position, has an accuracy base of 110, so that's really good. Um, damage mod is negative 20, so that's really good with a crit mod of 8%. However, um, it will inflict stun, and you'll get a 15% um, boost of stun chance if inflicted. On self, you'll be given horror which will add one point of stress for three rounds, but will give you a debuff of negative two speed. So this is probably your answer to stun people. At the same time, it does pretty good damage. Um, and I, I had this strange belief that you don't really need to be inflicted to do stun. So this is pretty much an answer if you want to just do stun because it's really good and the damage is also really good and if you get inflicted you'll just have a good chance of adding more stun against the enemy i'm just saying man um this is like a 50 50 you can use this without it or you can use it with it so you choose the next combat skill that benefits from Insightful is a Call Beyond. Now it's a combat skill that can only be used in position four, but it's an AOE hit, an AOE hit in all enemies. It's a range of 110. It'll inflict 25% um, damage boost if inflicted, but has a crit mod of negative 2%. On default, it won't do anything and you'll just be stuck in casting it. However, on your next turn, it will be released and it'll pull you for um, three positions forward. It'll add 2% stress for um, a 2%, two plus stress for three rounds, but you'll gain an additional action with a debuff of negative seven. And if you manage to hit a size 2 target you'll do a full 100% damage this is probably one of the moves that work on insightful and I only recommend you use this move when you're insightful if you do this without it you're gonna be missing out on that 25% damage and of course I, I have the strange feeling that you'll miss so um, please Consider using this move when being insightful. You won't regret it. The last combat skill is the Choir Bell. The Choir Bell is a heal spell that can be only be used in positions three and four with numbers of three and four. But if you are inflicted, you get a 30% healing skill and on the self, you'll get inflicted with horror with three stress for three rounds, 
but all heroes who get healed by this will get a cure of blight and bleed however allies will be stressed out by six points debuff on the self is negative two speed so you won't so who cares if they get stressed out what you need to keep looking at is the cure for those um, damage over time effects and that 30% uh, boost of healing so 3 and 4 will look completely different and like I said with trinkets you can make that even more powerful etc 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 I only recommend this if you're inflicted as well so what's my take well if you use this you should be fine when inflicted um, you can do this or you can do this or you can do this if you're inflicted um that's all i gotta say um if you don't like that this is also good too this is also a good um recommendation that's all i gotta say for the combat skills for the camping skills it's a little more unique um don't worry about these three it's a you know whatever skill um i always complain about it <laughs> all the time in all my videos but these uh four unique camping skills are the ones i don't complain and i'm gonna get started and get right into it so let's go the first camping skill is called blood vial it's a time cost three and only on itself heals for 40 percent of hp that's it it's sort of similar to this but it has a big boost of healing only on the self for a time cost three and you know what i i think that's okay if, if you need the extra healing if you feel like the food wasn't enough the blood vial is a good answer i just wish um there was one more effect for a time cost three but that's okay i think this is good enough um, the next camping skill is um, make contact. <clears throat> it's a time cost four, and on the self, stress heals for negative twenty percent. I mean negative twenty stress. If inflicted, you get a negative sixty stress. This is actually interesting because um, negative twenty. It's already good as it is, but if you're inflicted with insightful. You can actually benefit with this so you get 60 plus um the the 20 you'll be stress healing for negative 80. so there's something else i forgot to mention when you're insightful you get like a a stress resistance so you're slowly um crawling your way to um that 200 uh stress which will give you a heart attack um so if you see yourself getting close to that you can activate this camping skill and you'll shave off a big chunk of that stress so this is something i recommend that you keep in mind of if you're ever insightful the next camping skill is the healing church it's a time cost three and on a companion you'll heal for uh, 15 percent hp and you'll remove a disease and bleeding. This is also really good. It's similar to this one yet again, only this time you don't get a 50% chance of removing bleeding. This is just guaranteed that you'll not only remove bleeding, but you'll also remove a disease. And thank God, because screw diseases, I really hate them. I, I hate diseases. Every time I get inflicted with one in the sewer level, I just get mad. But thank God I have an answer to that. Um, and a time cost three, fairly cheap. Uh, I, I I give it a thumbs up. Healing Church, don't sleep on this one. The last camping skill is the Great Deep Sea Rune. It's a time cost two, and on one companion, you'll give a 20% resistance towards bleed, blight, stun, and debuff. And this doesn't last for four turns like most um, buffs. This lasts until you get to camping. This is really good. 
especially since it's a time cost too. If you give it to some of the tanks, like um, the man at arms or the leper, you're gonna see yourself um, tanking some things and you'll be fairly impressed all because of the rune itself. So um, this is something that you should also not sleep on and it's super cheap, so why not? Overall, the camping skills is more of a a situational tool set instead of a oh I'm just gonna use this for the majority of my dungeon run. Um, if you see yourself needing more healing, you got an answer to that. If you need a stress heal before you get a heart attack, you got an answer to that. And of course, these last two are just I need to get a, a disease removed or I need a tank stuff. So. There you go, the camping skills are just really good. Um, overall, uh, I treat this character like a better um, occultist, in a way. If you need someone that can do that, there you go. Uh, don't get me wrong, um, the occultist is really good at debuffing the enemy to where this character is just really good at buffing the teammates and doing some damage. But you won't see the full potential of this character until they get to um, stress levels of 100, which will get them insightful. And you'll see that full benefit. Anyways, all I'm saying is, you know, make sure you have them in positions um, 3 and 4. And you should do very well with this character. And like I said, um, if you want to make things simple... Um, you start from here, and then when you get inflicted, you can start messing around on which set would be comfortable for you. Overall, that's pretty much what I have to say about the Choir Hunter. I'm really happy that they added Bloodborne characters to the Darkest Dungeon now. Um, so modders, thank you. Um, all I have to say is, you know, please look forward to the next darkest dungeon class mod because it'll be another um bloodborne character and i'm hoping that we get a few more after the um these two bloodborne characters so take care guys i hope you guys stay safe and i'll see you on the next uh class mod review and remember fear the old blood is lit the path is clear we require only the strength to follow it